بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله uh, This is the first episode of this series which insha'Allah entitled Diaries of an Exorcist Now today بإذن الله تعالى on this episode I'm going to give you just a brief introduction What are we doing here? Why are we doing it? And then inshallah, what can we expect from the coming sessions bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Okay, what we're doing here is, I myself, I am a raqi, I perform ruqya um, on people and the, the wider community who require it. And alhamdulillah, from doing ruqya on the community, uh, you learn many lessons and I wanted to pass these lessons and experiences on to yourself. So what we will be doing bi-idhnillahi ta'ala is every single episode I will bring to you a particular case. So I will give you the gender of the person, the age of the person, what issues are they having in their life, what are they suffering with, what is their illness, what's their problem and how did we cure it with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did we do, how did we uh, recite, what program did we give to the person and how was that, how was that person cured by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After looking at that, we will then look at some lessons and benefits that we can derive from each and every single case. So after mentioning that case to you brothers and sisters, what I will do bi-idhnillahi ta'ala is say, okay, this thing happened and from that I can derive this benefit or we can derive this benefit. Not only in the field of ruqya, so if you brothers and sisters want to do it or you know somebody who is afflicted, not only in this field, but just from our daily lives, inside our daily lives and our daily routines in general. So what's the benefit of doing something like this? The first benefit is that we need to bring this topic into the attention, we need to bring this topic into the limelight. Because this is one aspect of our deen which actually has a direct link with our aqidah and our creed. Belief in the unseen, belief in the world of the jinn, belief in magic, all of this has been mentioned in the Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his authentic sunnah. So this for us as Muslims living today in a society which seeks to explain everything through science, there are certain things that cannot be explained through science. There are certain illnesses which cannot be explained or cured through science or conventional means of medicine that we have today. So we need to bring this to the attention of the Muslims because unfortunately there are many Muslim brothers and sisters who feel sure of their Islamic creed and yet they don't believe in the jinn, they don't believe in magic, they don't believe in evil eye. Whereas all of these have been established either in the Quran by Allah Azza wa Jal or by the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. Another benefit is by establishing the means by which we can treat or we can seek a cure from the Quran and from the Sunnah, then insha'Allah we will expose those awliya of shaitan. Those people who commit shirk and they try to treat people with shirk. Those people who put uh, our brothers and sisters onto the path of shaitan. So insha'Allah we will seek to expose those people and their practices bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Another benefit is that nowadays due to the nature of these issues, the person who does ruqya, he's called a raqi. The raqis are extremely busy. The raqis are extremely busy and there is Maybe in the whole of the UK, you can count the people who are doing ruqya according to the Quran and the Sunnah on one hand. Or maybe on a maximum of two hands. Maybe there are just ten brothers throughout the whole of the UK who stick to the principles of the Quran and the Sunnah and they do not deviate when making ruqya bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. So, because the raqis are so busy, it's very difficult for, to sit down with them and to get a case-by-case a guide or a case-by-case -case briefing and it's very difficult to have enough time to spend with them so that we can, with the permission of Allah, learn from their experiences. So what I will do insha'Allah is share some of my experiences. I am by no means the most experienced Raqi in the UK nor do I claim to be the best or anything near that. We only recite and we seek cure and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who puts shifa. We cannot benefit ourselves. All of the benefit comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth thing is that we 
want to encourage you brothers and sisters to come back to the Qur'an and to come back to the Qur'an and to use the Qur'an as a source of healing and a source of cure for any illness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ that this Qur'an it has been revealed as a cure and a mercy for the believers. And it does not increase the dhalimeen, the wrongdoers, the oppressors in every anything except for loss. So this Qur'an which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed is a shifa. It's a shifa, it's a cure for every single illness, brothers and sisters. And this is our creed and this must be our belief. That this Qur'an is a healing for any disease. Be it a physical disease, be it a mental disease, be it a disease which involves jinn or magic. The Qur'an from the beginning until the end, from cover to cover, is a healing with the permission of Allah. So we seek to encourage you brothers and sisters to come back and use the Qur'an as a healing with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fifth thing as I've previously mentioned is that we will seek to derive lessons. So with each and every single case we will seek to derive lessons and not only that, we will see how the magicians work, we will see how the jinns work, how the shayateen they work, the doubts that they try and put into people's minds and in people's hearts and how to counter these doubts how to counter these tricks of the magicians with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the sixth thing the sixth benefit the sixth reason why we should do this maybe you brothers and sisters listening here today ya akhi ya ukhti perhaps you yourself are suffering with something similar perhaps you will hear a case that we have dealt with and maybe you will say, you know, I'm suffering with something similar. I get these same symptoms. It's not a cause for concern. It's not, a, you know, it's not an, it shouldn't send alarm bells ringing. But inshallah, what you can do is you can contact a Raqi, somebody who you know is trustworthy, and you can speak to them. And inshallah, they can deal with you on a case to case basis rather than just uh, taking somebody else's symptoms, putting them on yourself, and thinking that you suffer with the same issue. No, but this can be an encouragement for you to go and seek some help with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The seventh point of benefit. Ikhwani, this disease, this disease of magic, this disease of jinn possession, this j disease of evil eye, subhanAllah, it is becoming more and more prevalent. It's becoming more and more common in our societies today. There is a pressing and a huge need for more people to start doing ruqya. And insha'Allah, when we go through our cases, this will encourage you brothers and sisters to perform ruqya on yourself and your families at the very least. And if there are some brothers who are capable with the permission of Allah, they can then go out into the community and they can help their other brothers and sisters in Islam. It's so common because we find that the level of iman of our, amongst the Muslims, this is decreasing. Our iman is getting weaker and weaker. And as our iman drops, then the level of mischief and the level of fitna and facade within the society, this increases. So it's extremely common. And as for the final thing, then we hope that from this series, we can earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can benefit the community. We can benefit the community by increasing their awareness. We can benefit the community as well with the permission of Allah. If one person, if one brother starts to do ruqya as a result of watching these videos, and he helps other people, then alhamdulillah this has been beneficial. So with that, I need to give a disclaimer. I need to give a disclaimer and this is because this is a public video and so we have to protect ourselves and our brothers and sisters. When you are doing ruqya, when you are doing ruqya, it's a case of don't try this at home. There are certain things that I will mention and you shouldn't try this at home. There are certain things that we have used and you shouldn't try this at home. There are certain issues or certain scenarios which may arise and you should stay away from this unless you have a knowledge of what you are doing. We do not want anybody to engage in beating. We do not want anybody to engage in bullying or in hitting or in any other form that you think you know what you're doing. But we don't want any detriment or any harm to come to the Muslims as a result of this. There is no doubt that we live in a society where Islam is being targeted. 
and everything has to be explained through science. So if we come today and we are exposing the things that science simply cannot explain, those issues that science has no answers for, Alhamdulillah, this is a good thing. But if we give those awliya of shaitan, if we give the friends and helpers of shaitan uh, ammunition, then no doubt they will use it. So brothers and sisters, I order you or I ask you and I remind you as well as myself to act with wisdom, to act with wisdom and only do that which you are comfortable with. Only do that which you are comfortable with and don't necessarily try everything that you hear from me on your families or on your friends. Okay, with that insha'Allah ta'ala, I'm going to mention to you the first case. The first case and this case was of a sister. This sister, she was approximately 60 years old, 55 to 60 years old. She was living in a different city and one of her family members contacted me and they said, my sister, she is a Pakistani sister. She does not speak Punjabi. However, recently, recently what started to happen, she has started to read more Quran. And now she suddenly, when you know she's reading Quran or she sat there, suddenly, subhanAllah, this sister starts speaking fluent Punjabi. When in reality, this sister has not spoken a word of this language in her entire life. But suddenly, she is absolutely fluent in this language. She is fluent in Punjabi. I don't know what's going on. The sister is no longer sleeping. She's having problems and pains in her stomach. So we said, okay, well, alhamdulillah, inshallah, we will go down. So the time came and I was with another brother. I was with another brother and we left Birmingham and we went to this city. On the way there, the, uh, the relative of this sister, the, uh, I think it was her, her brother, her brother contacted me and he said, look, we have another Raqi. He is local to us and he's come down. He has approximately 15 years of experience. And subhanAllah, uh, do you mind, brother? I will uh, you know, get the ruqya done from this brother. So we said, okay, well, alhamdulillah, the, that's no problem at all. Invite this brother around and he can do the ruqya. But if you don't mind, I would like to come and I would just like to watch because this brother has been doing ruqya for much longer than I have. And so I would like to learn from his experience. And the brother said, yes, that's fine. So we went. We went. And we turned onto the street. We turned onto the street and subhanAllah we learned later that this other Raqi, he was already there, he had done his ruqya, he was finished and he was just talking to the sister uh, while, when we arrived. But subhanAllah, the second that me and this brother turned onto the street, the sister, uh, her brother said, you know her face changed. Her face changed and she looked out the window and she said, they're here. She looked out the window and she said, they're here. Before we'd arrived, before we'd even knocked on the door, the sister knew of our arrival. The sister knew of our arrival. How is this? How can we explain such a phenomenon? This person knows that you're coming before you've even arrived. Ikhwani, let's not forget that the Prophet ﷺ told us that with each and every single one of us, there is a qareen. We have a qareen from amongst the jinn or from amongst the shayateen and he orders us or he whispers to us to do evil, to do haram to do haram so it's quite possible and ultimately this is an element of the unseen we can theorize but ultimately we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best unless we have some proof then we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best but what it seems is that our qareen that was with me and the other brother before we got there he had given news to the jinn that was possessing this sister and he told them that look they are coming for you so before we got there the sister knew and she was already aware of our arrival we walked into this room we walked into the room where the sister was taking precautions uh, a brief reminder here when you enter the house you must say bismillah enter with your right foot other shay otherwise shaitan will enter with you as the prophet alayhi salatu salam has told us so we took our precautions we sought refuge with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we entered into the house when we entered into the house brothers and sisters the the sister who was afflicted her face changed she was relaxed when we walked into the house and we sat down i sat directly opposite and the other brother sat next to me the sister was sat opposite us and she just started staring at us. And she said about me, there is something with this man. There is something wrong with him. There is something wrong with him. 
And the other Raqi, he said, sister, look, there's no issues here. Insha'Allah, the jinn has left, etc., etc. And this Raqi, he left. But I said to my companion, I said, Akhi, this sister, the jinn has not left. And this is not the sister that's looking at us right now. This is the jinn. This is the shaitan that's looking at us right now. Because of the expression that that sister had on her face. She was not looking at us. She was literally looking through us. She was looking through us and her gaze was fixed on me and this other brother. So I said to her brother, Akhi, if you don't mind, I'll do some ruqya on her as well. And he said, yeah, bismillah. So I pulled up a chair and I sat opposite the sister and I began reciting. And I started on this occasion, I started with Adhkar. You can start with Quran or you can start with Adhkar. So I started with the Adhkar. And I started glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I started praising Allah azza wa jal. And I started mentioning His oneness. And how He has control over all things. And then I sent Salat and Salam on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then I mentioned those Adhkar which I mentioned uh, by the Prophet alayhi salam in the authentic Sunnah. Ikhwani. About 10 minutes in or maybe even 5 minutes in The sister was sat there and suddenly Suddenly she leapt towards me She was sat there but, and I was sat opposite her And out of the blue she leapt towards me And she tried to grab me But subhanallah, subhanallah Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected us Because she was just about to make contact And then she stopped and she sat back down She stopped and she sat back down at this stage, we knew that it was the jinn. We knew that we had, uh, the jinn had come forward. The jinn had manifested some. So we continued with the recitation. And the sister started saying about me, he is a gold, he is a jinn, he is a jinn, he is this, he is this. Ikhwani, this is the first point of benefit. The first point of benefit that we can talk about here is the tricks of the shayateen. When they know that you are coming and you are not there to be their friend they cannot fool you then what they do ikhwani is they try and turn the other people against you so they will say oh look this person he is a magician he is a magician even though you are not a magician you have come with the quran you have come with the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is no sihr involved they will turn or try to turn the people against you they will turn to members of the household who perhaps don't know their religion as well as the other members of the household. Maybe this one is a little bit weak. He doesn't understand his religion as well. She will turn to him or the jinn will turn to him through the voice of the lady. The jinn is speaking through the woman's voice. But her voice is coming out as a man's voice. The voice is coming out as a man's voice through the mouth of a woman. He is a magician, he is a ghost, he has something with him, so that, so that the family will say to you, Akhi, you know what, actually we have doubts about you, we don't want you to recite. Barakallahu feekum and you can go. And the jinn is now, alhamdulillah, is happy. But subhanallah, when you recite Quran, it burns them the way fire burns us. Ikhwani, it burns them the way fire burns us, if not even worse. And they simply cannot stand it. So we continued with the recitation of the Qur'an. Whilst we were reciting, again, the sister came for me again, or the jinn came for me again. With the permission of Allah, the, it stopped just as it was in front, and then it sat back down. And it continued. And it continued, and she started, uh, she started making noises. She started doing all of these different things to try and drown out the sound of the Qur'an. At this stage, the other brother, may Allah uh, have mercy upon him, and may Allah preserve him, he would say to the jinn, shut up and listen to Qur'an. Shut up and listen to Qur'an. Stop making noises, listen to the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to kalam Allah. And so the jinn, it would get scared and then it would stop making these noises and it would continue to listen to the Qur'an. This is another point of benefit, ikhwan. When you are reciting, when you are reciting over somebody or you are reciting over yourself, do not let your mind become distracted. Do not let the patient become distracted. So if they start playing with their hands or they get their phone out and start playing with their phone, snatch it away from them, from them and tell them, listen to the Qur'an. Ask them a question. Can any harm come from the recitation of Qur'an? Of course the answer is no. Never. 
No harm can come from recitation of Qur'an. There is only benefit upon benefit. So the point of benefit here, Ikhwani, make them listen to Qur'an. Whether they like it, whether they don't, they have to listen to Qur'an. And if they don't, order them and be stern with them and be harsh with them and tell them to listen to the Qur'an. So we continue to do this. We continue to do this. And when the, the jinn or the shaitan, when he realized that, you know, I can't turn anybody against him. I can't drown it out by making my noises because they're telling me off. Then he tried with me. He tried to make arrogance and pride enter into my heart. And he said to me, do you know what is written on your forehead? He said, you have Allah written across your forehead. Subhanallah. To try and make me feel like I am arrogant and make pride enter into my heart. To make me feel like I am the one. I am awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst his awliya, but it's not from one of, for one of us to say we are the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so I said to him, look, shaitan, play whatever game you like. I will tell you who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And then I recited the ayah from the Quran, huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu, alimul ghaybi wa shahada, huwa rahmanul rahim. And then we started with the recitation of the Qur'an, we continued with the recitation of the Qur'an and the jinn was listening. The jinn was listening. And we continued with the recitation of Qur'an. We continued reciting and reciting. And the jinn was clearly, visibly, the sister had pain on her face. And then my brother, uh, the brother that was with me, he, begin, he began to uh, speak to the jinn. Alhamdulillah, the brother was fluent in Punjabi. I don't know a word of Punjabi and the jinn didn't respond to us when we spoke in English. So the brother, he began to speak to the jinn in Punjabi. And the brother is from India. And he said to me, from the dialect, from the dialect that this jinn is speaking, the jinn is from a specific village within India because they only speak this dialect in that village. Had that sister been to India, she had never been to India in her life. Did she ever speak Punjabi, let alone fluently? Did she know a word of Punjabi? She never knew a word of Punjabi in her life. Ikhwani, after speaking to the jinn, and this is something that you can do, but Ikhwani, a point, do not engage in useless chat with the shayati. Do not engage with useless in useless speech with the jinn. Why? Because they will speak forever and ever. They will speak all night long. Ultimately, what's their aim? Their aim is to stop you from reciting Quran. Their aim is to stop you from burning them. Their aim is to stop you from killing them and destroying them. And if they talk to you, Ikhwani, they will talk about all the things in the world. And you will think, SubhanAllah, you'll be wow. But subhanallah, don't speak to them unless it is absolutely necessary. If you are a person who thinks, you know what, I wouldn't be able to control myself, don't speak to them at all. Don't speak to them at all except for saying, leave or I will continue to recite. And if he doesn't leave, you continue with your recitation. If he begs you and he says, please stop, then you say, leave or I will continue to recite. And this is all you should say. This is all you should say. So we began speaking to the jinn and the jinn began to raise his hands toward us and, and almost you know, direct this act of worship and we told the uh, brothers and the brothers slapped the woman's hands down and we said listen, we only raise our hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the only one worthy of us raising our hands to put your hands down for we cannot benefit ourselves. And so it transpired Ikhwani, what was this sister suffering from? After speaking to this jinn and he mentioned he was in love with the sister. He was in love with the sister and he had been inside of her body for 30 years. He had been inside of her body for 30 years. And he mentioned to us that when she was, I think he, she was 21, Allahu Alam, but I think if I recall correctly, she was 21. She was standing outside of a Gurdwara, a, a Sikh temple. She was standing outside of the Sikh temple. And she was playing with some children. And the shaitan, this awliya of shaitan, this jinn, he took a liking to her. He fell in love with her. And he entered into her body. And it's been 30 years. It's been 30 years and he was inside of her body. 
and subhanallah we said to him leave or we are going to kill you he said you can kill me i will not leave it's like subhanallah we see in the movies when two people are in love and somebody is coming for one of them the other one stands in front and says you have to get through me first kill me i don't care but you're not going to get to my loved one this is like what that shaitan he was doing i don't care kill me i will not leave her kill me i will not leave her so we continued with the recitation we continued with the recitation it transpired that his um his religion he was a sikh jinn he was a sikh jinn his religion was sikhism and he loved this woman he 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 was under the impression he was married to her and he just simply would not leave he simply would not leave we recited 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 he was screaming but he was very resilient ikhwani a point of benefit if you have a tree and a tree is growing for 30 years are the tree is the tree going to come out easily if you try to pull the tree out would you be able to pull the, that tree out easily of course you wouldn't because the roots have been growing for 30 years the roots have taken hold and they are firm so subhanallah as the prophet alayhi salatu salam he told us that shaitan flows through the veins of the children of adam like blood subhanallah so if this shaitan has been flowing through her veins for 30 years do you think he's going to just come out within one session of course he's not of course he's not and then whilst we were reciting we continued to recite ikhwani subhanallah look at the evil nature of this shaitan we were reciting we were calling upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the jinn was sat there and he was saying iblis 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 and he was calling upon iblis while we were calling upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we said to him we challenged him that he said oh a baba from the temple sent me a man from the sikh temple sent me we said okay Tell your Baba to send as many people as you like. Nobody can help you this day. There is no helper for you this day. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the permission of Allah, we are going to kill you, we are going to rid you from this illness. Ikhwani, we, st we were there for approximately three hours reciting on this sister. And subhanallah, in the end we said, look, it's very late now, we need to come back. So we left. And we went back another time. And Ikhwani, this is where this situation, an extremely important point of benefit. So we went a second time. This time I didn't go with one brother, I went with three or four brothers. Three or four brothers. And when we went, I introduced each brother by name. And then I said, this is Abdullah, this is Abdullah, this is Abdullah, this is Abdullah. And I introduced them all as the slaves of Allah. And I said to this jinn, we are here for nothing except to kill you or for you to leave. And none of us is your protector, none of us is your helper. In fact, we all hate you for the sake of Allah. Why did I do this? Why did I mention to the jinn that we are all Abdullah and we're here to kill you? We're your enemies. Ikhwani, imagine you walked into a room and there was four people in this room and all of them were looking at you sternly. And then they all said, you know what? I want you dead. I want you dead and I'm your enemy. Wouldn't it intimidate you? Wouldn't it put fear into your heart? Of course it would. You're alone and there's four or five other people, they all want you dead. So we did this to bring fear and intimidation into this jinn. So we continued to recite this time, Ikhwani, but this time the shaitan, he came with a different trick. He said, I need, he spoke on the tongue of the woman and the woman was saying, I need to go to a mental hospital. I've got a headache, put me on medicine. I need to go, there's nothing wrong with me. Take me to the doctor. Take me to the doctor. Ikhwani, this is when we have a problem now. This is when we have a problem now. Because we don't understand our religion. We don't understand the things that are in front of us. The things that we are seeing, we think that our eyes are belying us. We think that our ears are, you know, telling lies. So subhanAllah, somebody from amongst the family said, Brothers, there's nothing wrong with her. Brothers, there's nothing wrong with her. She needs to go and see a doctor. And so I turned to this person and I said, Akhi, I think you need to go and see a doctor. Because you have seen your sister who doesn't speak a word of Punjabi. You have heard her speaking fluent Punjabi. 
you have seen your sister who doesn't speak like this you have seen your sister calling on Iblis you have seen that this jinn is speaking in the tone of a man's voice you have seen or you have heard that your sister cannot take the recitation of Quran and then you say she needs to go and see a doctor Ikhwani a point of benefit from this a point of benefit from this the shaitan he will come to you and he will make all of the other routes beautified for you he will beautify all of the other paths and he will make the avenue of the Qur'an seem like it is something which won't benefit you. So after seeing all of this Ikhwani, the family said, you know what, there's nothing wrong with this sister, except that she needs to see a doctor. And we were not called to this case again. We never heard from these people ever again, because they put their sister on extremely strong medicines, and the brother who attended the first time, he is a pharmacist, and he looked at her medicine. The medicine that she was on is medicine which sedates the brain. The medicine is something which sedates the brain and it basically turns a person into a vegetable. So the jinn, they want, if they're, possessed in, if they're possessing a person, they want the person to take this medicine. They want that person to become a vegetable because then he won't recite Quran, he won't pray, he won't be in a state of wudu, he, may, he won't make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if he's not doing that, then the jinn have free roam and they can come and go through his body the way they please. And they will have complete control over this person. So Ikhwani, a point of benefit here. We should not seek to treat everything with science because there are some things that science simply cannot explain. How does science explain a 55-year-old woman, a 55-year-old woman speaking like a man? How does science explain a 55-year-old woman who doesn't speak a word of a certain language now speaking it fluently with a native from that country? And that person identifies that he is from this area. How or why would a 55-year-old woman say, I'm a, I'm a Sikh? Why would a 55-year-old Muslim call upon Iblis? Ikhwani, the shayateen, they will seek and they will, they will seek to confuse you. They will seek to put arrogance in your heart. They will try all of those tricks. They will try all of those tricks. And I have no doubt that now that that sister is on those medicines, she's no longer speaking in, Sikh, in, in, in uh, Punjabi. She is no longer having these outbreaks. Why? Because her brain has been sedated. Now that her brain is sedated, the shaitan can do whatever he pleases. And the question arises, if the jinn was in her for 30 years, if the jinn was in her for 30 years, why only recently has it surfaced? Why hasn't it caused trouble before? After speaking to her brothers and her sons uh, on the first occasion, they told us that recently my mother has started to pray more. My mother has started to read more Quran. Subhanallah, there we have our answer. When we make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we read Quran, when we pray five times a day, and we do our sunnah prayers and our supererogatory prayers, then whatever is inside us of these jinn and these shayateen, they are burnt and they simply cannot stand it. So it brought it to the surface. Imagine you have a, a big layer of, of metal and underneath that metal, there is a soft center. Ikhwani subhanallah, when you read Quran and you make dhikr of Allah, all of this metal and all of this hardness of the heart, it gets burnt away, it gets removed. And so what is left is the the remembrance of Allah and the light of the remembrance of Allah and the shayateen they simply cannot accept that and that's why he surfaced so ikhwani this is the end of the first episode and we have mentioned an introduction why do we need to look at this topic we have mentioned the the uh, story or the situation of the sister who had a jinn in her for 30 years but because the jinn was able to whisper into the ears of the family they went down the science routes and they denied what their eyes saw. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a beneficial series. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to learn and implement from the lessons that we go through in this series. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm on Tawheed and to keep us away from the shayateen and from the awliya of a shaytan. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to expose and humiliate all of those who go against his message in the dunya and in the akhirah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.